Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. I'm an anchor reporter for KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is a clinical psychologist based in San Francisco. She's been treating children and teens most of her career. With the pandemic and mental health issues stemming from that pandemic, a kid's about to go back to school. We thought it was a good time uh, to get a little insight. So let's say hi to Dr. Christine Garcia. How are you? Hi, well, I'm doing well. Thank you, Frank. And thank you for focusing on this important topic. It's well, my guess huge. is you have been busy. Is that true? I would say so. I would say it's been quite quite a ride since the pandemic started. Yeah. For sure. what, what is it about the pandemic? Uh, I know adults are obviously affected, your routine's affected. But what about children, kids, teenagers? Uh, it seems like uh, maybe they've been affected even more. Well, I would say so. I, I don't know if I would say more, but they're definitely being affected and quite uh, quite severely, some of them. I'm not saying that every kid is suffering. I think there are lots of kids who are doing just fine, actually. But there are a lot of kids who were doing fine before and they're not now. And that's because of the impact of the isolation that they've experienced. And it depends on obviously where you are in the country and how the uh, pandemic has impacted um, lockdowns and all of those things. But for the most part, most of the kids in this country, they've experienced some form of isolation and lockdown due to schools being closed for safety reasons with the pandemic. That's important, but it's also impacted their development into what they need to do depending on their stage in growth. So for younger kids, they need to be out playing with, with their friends and they need you to be around too, but they also need their friends and running around and, and maybe you know taking little risks that they need to do to learn about what is safe, what's not safe. And then for teens, as we all know, this is a time when they are ready for independence and they're trying new things out all the time. And being at home with your parents, with your family, with your siblings, that has made everything that much more intense. And this development in your brain and in your bodies keeps going despite the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, that's a tough one to, to manage and navigate for families and for, for our kids. Talk about routine. What, it's a comfort thing, I think. Uh, I know for me too, if I get out of my routine, my body clock goes all over the place. What is it about a uh, routine, uh, not only for adults, but especially for, uh, for children, for teens? Well, routine is key. I think um, as any parent probably knows that when they have, when you have your baby, a routine is really important. And that's what we try to get them into from the moment that they're born. Uh, we try to get them into a sleep routine, into a nap routine, eating, all of that. For kids, it's so important to have this base. And that's because they are growing and trying new things out. And a routine is something you can count on. You know when you're going to be eating, you know when you're going to be sleeping, you know when you're gonna be going to school, all of that. And for the pandemic, when the world feels a bit more unsafe or a lot more unsafe, routine is key. Uh, and so I've encouraged parents to really try to maintain some sort of routine I know parents are juggling a lot too, working from home, um, but try to really make some level of expectation so that your kids know what you expect uh, in terms of a routine and that you know too what to expect from your kids. What should parents be looking out for? Because depression, anxiety, uh, that isolation kind of manifests in different, different ways, I guess. Yeah. What should they be looking for? So, um, you know, I think a lot of kids now, even kids who are doing just fine before the pandemic hit and had not experienced any mental health issues, some kids, some teens are really experiencing that and have experienced that. What I tell folks is that it's not unusual to see behaviors that kind of your kid didn't express before because this is a new, new era for all of us. However, if you're seeing a pattern over time that's different from what you know of your kid, I would say check it out. And so that could mean more sleeping, difficulty getting out of bed, difficulty following the routines that you've set up for them, 
Um, any changes in eating habits, if they are eating less, if they're eating way more. Uh, irritability, a lot of kids when they're depressed uh, don't show it by uh, the usual things that we know about depression as adults, which is sadness and, 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 and just melancholy. A lot of kids uh, can just be very irritable and anything can set them off. And that could be anything from anxiety that they might be experiencing to depression too, um, getting into lots of fights about lots of different things, you know, um, and, and any sort of unusual behavior that just doesn't feel like your kid anymore. Well, what can parents do to comfort them or to uh, not only see those signs, but to uh, create an environment where uh, this doesn't happen? Yeah, so we're in a really tough situation as parents. I'm also a parent of a 13 year old and it's been quite a journey, I, I should say. Uh, so I think the best thing is to try to not police them, uh, even though you are in your mind, because of course you worry, you wanna make sure they're safe, you wanna make sure they're doing all right. But if you can push those worries aside and come at it with a point of curiosity, because the thing to remember is your kids are doing the best they can with a fairly impossible situation of uh, coronavirus and the pandemic. Uh, we're all doing the best we can. And so think that of your kids too and express curiosity about what they're into and what they're doing. So in terms of, I know a lot of kids right now are very much online. They're doing school online. They're talking with their friends online because they can't do anything else. And that's okay. But I would suggest to parents, especially of teens, ask them about what they're into and maybe download yourself the different apps that they're into and check them out and get into them too yourself and have your kids be the expert in it and ask them, oh, this is what you like. This is what I like. What do you think about this? And that creates a sense of trust that you're not just there to monitor everything that they're doing, which inevitably creates a feeling that they're doing something wrong. And nobody likes to feel that they're doing anything wrong, especially teenagers. You know, their brains are wired to, to take risks. Their um, brains need to make mistakes in order to learn from their mistakes. What you wanna have in mind is that you wanna make sure the mistakes they make are mistakes that aren't too dangerous uh, in this day and age. Um, yeah. yeah, you touched on it a little bit, but uh, more of the younger kids, but when they're out playing and interacting, um, there's a lot more going on out there than, than the naked eye. You just see them playing tag or playing catch. Uh, but like you said, they're, that's part of the journey, right? It's part of the journey. We all went through this journey and it's really important to do that. So I suggest to folks, do what you can to create those spaces for your kids. And so for young kids, maybe go into a, a, a bubble or a pod that I think families are creating where you all agree as parents to maintain the same pandemic pod or bubble with several folks so that you all maintain safety and you just interact with, your kids just interact with specific few and then they can play and do the things that they need to do for their development. Yeah, I know mental health issues are up. Uh, the CDC uh, recently did a study on ER visits and I've got the numbers here. Kids uh, five to 11, up 24%. Uh, teenagers 12 to 17 years of age, uh, up some 31%. Um, that's pretty significant. It is, it is, it's sobering. Uh, it's really sobering. and. You know, I'm not sure, uh, obviously, if those, those kids would have ended up in the ER anyway. Uh, I just read a New York Times article that, you know, emergency rooms are not equipped to manage behavioral health issues and mental health issues. And that's certainly true. The, that's that's kind of not their specialty, um, per se, um, though they do have mental health um, folks in there and, and they're good. But there's a lot more coming in. And that's because of this question that I think a lot of a lot of us, a lot of adults, but especially kids are facing, especially teens, of what does this mean for my life? Mm -hmm. So when your teen is in their um, in their in their world, 
they are supposed to be thinking about their future and how they can navigate their future, what they want for their future, who, what kind of friends they want, what kind of identity they want. And they're faced with an existential question of what is it all for? Because they're hearing about the pandemic. It doesn't seem that it's over. Um, I think they've hit what I've taken to calling like the pandemic wall and they've given up a lot of them. And unfortunately for some kids who are maybe more vulnerable to mental health issues, it's tipped them over the edge. And I think that's why we might be seeing a lot more cases in the emergency rooms right now. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I know school, we hope, I'm sure you do too with a 13 year old, uh, they will be opening soon, um, hopefully here in the spring. Is there some anxiety attached to that too for some of these kids that will I be safe? Uh, will I fit in? All of a sudden you're, you know, you're socializing again and uh, will I make my grades? All that kind of thing. There's some angst with that too, I would imagine. Absolutely. And, you know, it might not be conscious to them at the moment. I think a lot of kids are just waiting to get back into school and get back to hanging out with friends but they've been kind of bubbled up (laughs) in the homes with their families. And so I would say, just pay attention, see what's going on, listen a lot to your kids. They might be dropping hints that it's not as easy a transition as they had imagined. There's probably going to be disappointments and anxieties about what they're gonna face when they're there. And just listen for those signs if, if things aren't okay and be prepared and, really help guide them and say that it's normal. It's normal after being a year into this to suddenly go back can be also a big change and it's gonna take time. It's gonna take time. And for parents too, uh, I mean, there's no blueprint for this ride the last year. What would you say to them as they're getting their kids ready to leave the nest again and go back to school? So a number of things. First, it's totally normal to have worries and fears and and anxieties about what's gonna happen. And as much as possible, try to put those to the side. And it can be that you're also, you've also been struggling with this pandemic and pandemic wall. If you need to um, engage in your community and seek professional help too, to help you manage this, I think If you want your kids to be resilient and strong, you need to also work on your own resiliency and try to practice those habits of routine and connection and community. Um, I think also to trust the kids are resilient and that they will bounce back from this. Our brains are structured so that we are always trying to move towards growth. And sometimes it takes a left turn and sometimes it, you know, we fall off that track, we all do but we eventually all come back too. And one last question about some kids, maybe middle schoolers that are now sixth graders, uh, kids that are freshmen, college kids that are freshmen, most of which have never stepped foot on their school. That's a daunting thing where you walk in, you know, you've been in a pandemic and now boom, you've got all this, all this new stimuli. Uh, that's gotta be kind of crazy too. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think what um, parents can do is really talk to their kids about this, be open and honest, uh, talk about, you know, how they could maybe handle that and go slowly. And I also put a lot of faith and trust into the teachers of our schools. They are well aware of the transitions that kids face coming back. And colleges too are well aware of this. And I've spoken with some of my friends, colleagues in universities and universities are planning for this uh, to really help their kids ease into transition. And, you know, a lot of universities, a lot of, of schools, they all have counselors that kids can talk to about managing the transition. I would say, encourage your kids to, to use that if they don't wanna to talk to you. It, it, t- it takes a village. And so we had to create a village to help our kids back in. And I think it's important to let your child know you're not alone. Every other kid's facing the same thing, right? Exactly. You're not alone. And even parents who have been working 100% remotely right now, they're going to face transitions too, moving back into work when work 
reopens for them. And you can talk to your kids about that too. You can say, you know, this feels a little weird to go back into, you know, into school and I don't know about this. And, you know, you can also look online uh, to look at the schools that their ki your kids are entering into. There's a lot of resources that universities and schools provide. You can talk to kids who are already there, um, you know, college students. So you can help them dip their toe into the new environment that they're entering into. Well, I think we're all ready. Uh, Dr. Christine Garcia, I wanna thank you so much for all your insight. Uh, really helpful and really interesting as well. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, I'm Frank Malicote. If you'd like more information, you can go to newsnowfox.com. Have a great day, everybody.